Hello and welcome back to a, another episode of Chris's Secret Podcast. I am impressed that you found it. As always, new episodes come out every single Monday, so I appreciate you all tuning in. And then I also will put out typically shorts from my podcast interviews and episodes, and I'll put those out just kind of you know, randomly throughout the week. And so my podcast can be found on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube. And then those shorts I put out on YouTube, like YouTube shorts, Instagram, and TikTok. So if you want to get content from me, please stay tuned, you know, rate, review, whatever, download, undownload, whatever, you know, what part of my take say, they like, like download, unsubscribe, redownload, whatever. I don't even have to do all that, but you know, I really would appreciate it if you subscribed on YouTube and if you listen on Apple or Spotify, also check me out there and then leave me a review on as well for any of those. I also do mailbags. That's what last week's episode was all about, which was a mailbag. So I try and do mailbags I'll do them kind of periodically. I used to do them at the end of every single episode, and I don't really want to do that. I, I figured I'll just make like a dedicated episode, maybe like once a month or every other month, to just answering your all's questions. Because ever since I've been doing my shorts or clips from the shows, I've been getting a lot of people kind of hitting me up about them, either on like Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, people commenting, people DMing me. So if you want to be in my next mailbag, it's as simple as, Text me, call me, you know, reach out to me on Instagram, TikTok. I don't have a Facebook, but reach out to me on any of those places. You can find me at either at Chris Arslan on all of those. You can reach out to me. Maybe not TikTok. I don't, I don't really get on TikTok ever, but comment me or, or reach out to me there. Or you can text me or you can call me or you can leave a question in a review or you can just comment on any of the videos. And once again, those can be found at Chris's Secret Podcast. They're all the same on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. And then if you're going to you know, leave a review or anything like that on Apple or Spotify, do that there as well. And I will try and get to you. I've had some fun, some fun interviews that I've done recently, and I've got some pretty sick interviews coming up that I'm very fired up for. However, this one, I wanted to just do a few back-to-back -back solo episodes because that's kind of what I originally wanted to do with the podcast was do more solo episodes. So... Here I am. I will say I am a little bit uh, exhausted recovering. I did. I had a big kind of cookout with Christina. We had a few friends over for the fourth, and so or like over the weekend. So did that. Got you know had to clean all that mess up and all that fun stuff. But it was a good time. And now I am ready to record. So on this week, what I want to go over on this podcast is a good old fashioned book review. I haven't done one of these in a while. I, I was doing a handful of book reviews, and this is a book I actually finished a while back, been meaning to do this episode. And so this book review is going to be on this book right here, which I guess if you're if you're just listening, I'm doing a bad job of doing a podcast. I'm just holding up the book and showing it on the screen. So if you want to see the book, see what it looks like, um, obviously go check out my YouTube or uh, Spotify thing also shows the video. So you can go check it out there. But the book is Kobe Life Lessons from a Legend. And it's from Nelson Pena, I believe is how you pronounce that name. It's got the fun little like, what's it called? A unla or whatever? I don't know what it's called. I learned it in Spanish class, but I also failed Spanish. So um, anyways, it's a great book. Wanted to give kind of my thoughts on it. I actually got this book from my fiance. I think it's the one that gave me this a while ago. So finally got around to reading it. It's honestly not too bad of a read. It's pretty entertaining. And it's only, I think it was like 140 pages, 139 pages, something like that. So pretty easy read, pretty short read. Also, what I liked about the book is once again, if if you're just listening, I'm, I'm showing a picture of the book right now, or the inside of the book. But what I liked about it is a lot of the pages are just like they got like big quotes on them or they'll have like really cool like photos in the book that are kind of like a unique kind of style. I don't know. That was cool. So it's it's technically called 140 pages, but really 
it's it's short. It's probably a hundred page book if you take out you know a lot of the big massive quotes that take up the whole page and in the photo. So it's a short, easy read, and it's it's pretty cool because it talks about stories from. I, now I will say also I should probably started this show with this. I'm a massive massive Kobe fan. A, a lot of people probably have seen the clip that I did with one of my interviews where we were talking about Kobe being the goat. I don't actually think he's the goat goat, but he is like all-time favorite favorite athlete ever loved him for his work ethic and all that st fun stuff so i will say just like full disclosure while i'm going over like my review of the book i knew a lot of the stories that were in this book already because just always kind of falling along kobe from uh, from afar and as a kid i mean he was huge when i was like elementary middle and high school so like that's like my prime being a sports fan fandom was was then so i had like multiple kobe jerseys growing up um would always be like in the backyard playing with my little brother playing basketball I'd be like i'm kobe you can be Shaq or you can be Derek fisher i'll pass you the ball and they'd be like i want to be kobe's like no nah, hell no i'm kobe so, <laughs> so um no it, it was it was a great book though and if you are a kobe fan would would recommend it it had a lot of cool like interesting stories from his childhood that i didn't know like there was you know stories of him playing like pick up basketball or, or, or not pick up, but playing like one-on-one -on -one basketball because his dad, uh, Kobe's dad, if you didn't know this, was a professional basketball player. So Kobe had like access to the locker rooms and to the players and he would go out and do like warm ups, you know, before games with his dad. And so he'd be playing like one-on-one -on -one or horse with like legit professional athletes when he was in grade school and he'd be beating them as a as a high schooler in one on one. So a bunch of cool, like legendary stories from back in the day. Also legendary. If you know anything about Kobe, again, he is you know, infamous for the, the, the talking trash that he used to do on the courts and off the courts and just like regular, you know, playing like whatever ping pong with him or something. And so a bunch of fun, like talking trash stories that are in the book as well. So I guess favorite part of the book and like one of like i would say my um just just good just work ethic like that and that is why i liked kobe and that's why i've always like was a huge kobe fan back in the day is his his work ethic is second to none um you know he was not didn't have the body and the size of like a lebron james he was not some seven foot you know freak of nature like Shaq or yao ming michael jordan is like everyone's like probably like the biggest comp for kobe except michael jordan's hands he could like palm a basketball the way that most people will like hold a softball <laughs> like michael jordan had just massive mitts and you know kobe you know, let's not get it twisted. I mean, he was what, 6'6 six, six or 6'5? Six, like, he was a huge human, could jump out of the gym, but did not have the, the just God given talent that a lot of, you know, the greats of any sport have. And so, why I really liked Kobe is that his work ethic was just second to none. And so, like, one of, you know, from the book, an interesting example, and, and one of the things that you don't really, or I never really thought about, is just all of the little nuances where he's always trying to figure out a way to, to get an advantage or, or get an edge, and also how he doesn't try and, like, reinvent the wheel. So, like, the obvious one is when he got into the NBA, he was, like, literally cold calling and, and trying any way possible, hey, get me in touch with, you know, you know this guy. Michael Jordan was who he was like only the person that he was trying to learn from. Like he wasn't trying to learn from, you know, some dude that rides the bench that was on the Lakers when he got put on the team, you know, as a rookie, didn't have any interest in learning from them, you know, figuring out what they were doing. He was trying to learn from the best of the best. So he was reaching out to people like his all time idol mentor. One of his best friends was ended up being Michael Jordan. So as soon as he got in the league, he's reaching out to him any way he can to try and learn from him another massive mentor of his that once again just literally i'm in sales so i love this just cold calm reaching out trying to work through agents to get in touch with him was michael jackson one of the all-time legends in the like entertainment space so just kind of showing that and then i don't know how many people even like kind of remember this or know this but when kobe bryant was wrapping up his basketball career you know he didn't want to be one of these 
guys that was like way past his prime, washed up and bouncing around teams. He wanted to leave while he still had a little bit left in the tank. Now, he did suffer a lot of injuries, unfortunately. So, you know, his last few years in the league were kind of him battling injuries. But if anybody remembers his last game, freaking dropped 60 points, uh, eliminated the uh, the Jazz from the playoffs when they, they needed to win the game to make it to the playoffs and Kobe was playing for nothing other than like, this is my last game. Dropped 60 on him, won the game, game-winning shot, game-winning free throws, all that fun stuff. And so when he's wrapping up his career, he knew that he wanted to go into storytelling because he was kind of reflecting his last few years in the league on like, you know, what did I like? What do I like doing? What are some of the like the the fondest memories I had? And he was reflecting back on when he was, I believe it was when he was in high school. He would go and read to like kindergarten kids uh he'd like read just books and then he actually started writing his own kind of short stories and reading them to the kids and like besides playing basketball and and you know winning championships that was something that he always looked back on as like this was some of the most fun I've ever had in my life and I want to figure out how to do this once I retire which also I respect like he know he knew he didn't want to go into you know being a coach or being a GM necessarily he wanted to do storytelling because that was just something else he liked. And I think that's also just a good lesson for everybody. Like I like listening to podcasts. I like producing, you know, I like making videos back in the day. I've always liked kind of doing like that fun, creative editing. And that's why I'm doing this podcast. I'm just doing it for fun. I want to make this, you know, potentially a career one day. And so he was like, look, I want to do storytelling. And now what I will say, I've been inspired. And so I've been, you know, after reading this book, I know I'm doing this review a while after I read it. I read this book, you know, months ago, but he wanted to get into storytelling. So instead of going on YouTube or Google and just Googling some stuff and, and whatever, talking to you know your parents and like, hey, I, should think, I think I should do this. No, he started reaching out to, just like he did when he was a basketball player, he wanted to reach out to Michael freaking Jordan and learn from the literal goat of basketball. He did the same thing here where he's like, look, if I'm going to learn how to be a good storyteller, if I'm going to learn how to either write books or plays or movies, I want to talk to the people that have like are like titans of the industry. So he was reaching out to, and and also when I say reaching out to you, think it's Kobe Bryant, he'll just be able to pick up the phone and talk to these people. No, like a lot of these like people that I'm about to list didn't watch basketball, didn't even know who he was. So he'd be cold calling him, reaching out to like his connections that might have connections with them and just figuring out any way possible to learn from these like masters in their given profession. So he was talking to people like Steven Spielberg, who wrote, I don't like a lot of people probably know this. I'm not like a big like movie goer buff, but wrote Jaws, wrote uh, Jurassic Park, Indiana Jones, and like a whole other bunch of like massive classics. Reaching out to uh, Steven Spielberg, Spielberg, also reaching out to George R.R. R. Martin, which once again, not a big, not a big TV show nerd, looked him up. The person that wrote Game of Thrones, probably like the biggest, <laughs> the biggest TV show of the past. I mean, I don't even know, like ever. One of like the biggest shows ever. And then J.K. Rowling, which I actually knew this one, wrote Harry Potter. Also one of the most successful book series of all time. Also was reaching out to Oprah Winfrey. Don't know if you know this. Obviously, you know from the Oprah Winfrey show. She also had her own Oprah TV channel or network. And then also was the first ever female a uh, billionaire or black female billionaire ever of all time and way more. So just trying to learn from the people that have done it. And I don't know if kind of call back to another book that I read, uh, which was the four hour work week. They talk about doing the same thing where it's like, look, like don't, if you're trying to become a successful, whatever, pick the industry, pick the topic, pick the career path, don't just like go and talk to like, oh, I think my uncle was a was a sales rep. No, it's like go talk to the best sales reps in the world. So like if you were trying to get into to sales, why not just reach out to like Grant Cardone or reach out to the freaking Wolf of Wall Street? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like Jordan Belford, like just reach out to the best sales reps, you know, or if you're trying to, I don't know, go into acting. Well, just go reach out. Like, what's it hurt to reach out to Leonardo DiCaprio? Probably never t get in touch with him, but hey, if you do, great. So, like, my person I've been trying to work on getting in touch with, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get him on the podcast. That'll be like the last episode I ever do, or it'll, maybe it'll be the first one that blows up. I'm getting Rob Deer on the show. And once again, it's, it's, it, it's just a tried and true formula of reaching out to people that are 
have have the success. They've done it, been there, done it, know how to do it. Just pick their brain. Why why waste money on these like kind of scammy online coaching courses or or waste your time talking to people that have, you know, maybe done it at an average level or decent level? Like I've done this when I went into ADP, which is like my first big like sales job out of school. Like I had another sales job making pennies, but then got into ADP. When I started ADP, I didn't go and talk to you know, the other people that were on my team or the other new hires, like I could care less about the new hires. I don't want to talk to them. I want to talk to the people that are doing the best work. So I went and talked to everyone in my region. You know, we had a region like 60 people and there was like five people making all the sales. So I was like, I want to talk to those five people. So I talked to them. I had them be my mentor. Like I would make them my manager. Like if they got promoted, like I just wanted to talk to the best of the best. And then I'd even reach out to people that are outside of like my region that are also like the top reps in the entire country. I want to go pick their brain. I want to talk to them. I want to see what they're doing. I don't want to, I don't want to learn from the people that are, you know, never made a lot of sales, never made a free trip in their life, never made a P club. Like who cares about those people? Like, I mean, I want to learn what maybe not to do from what they're doing, or I want to share what I'm learning from, you know, these really good sales reps. But yeah, it's just, it's, I feel like a lot of people waste their time talking to people that haven't done it or haven't done it well. So I think it's cool to see that Kobe was, was, doing that as well when he was trying to get into learning how to be a great storyteller. Now, one big takeaway that I had from the book, anyone that, I mean, probably anyone that knows anything about Kobe knows about his rape allegations, which is like probably the biggest, I would say, stain on his career. And honestly, in my opinion, I think if it wasn't for those rape allegations or the rape allegation, um, it, it was one. But I think if it wasn't for that, I, I don't know if he'd be going down as the greatest of all time. But I think it'd be a lot closer to him being the GOAT. Kind of how we, people talk about him now that he passed away. Like how people talk about him as like, oh, he was one of the greatest, greatest competitors, blah, blah, blah. I think people would have talked about him that way during his career. Whereas during his career... Basically, ever since those those the rape allegations came out, he kind of was. I'm not gonna say like an afterthought or or was kind of swept under the rug, but he, I mean, he won one MVP and he was the best player in the league for years. So it's it's just one of those things where I think once that happened, it kind of it kind of really brought down his career. And it was interesting. I didn't know a ton about what happened during those rape allegations. And the book goes into, I wouldn't say like a ton, a ton of detail about them, but it did spend, you know, basically an entire chapter talking about the allegations. And they were, I would say, not as bad as I remember them. And then also maybe like way worse than I remember them. Just like a quick synopsis on what happened. He went to an away game, if I remember correctly, went to a away game, had some girl that he met come back to him, to his like hotel room. They ended up having sex after the fact. Also, keep in mind, Kobe at this point, I want to say he was like, he was young. He was I wanted like 21, 22, recently married to his uh his his wife and I believe that they were like high school sweethearts. And so was married, super young, ended up having this affair with this random girl and after the fact the girl claimed that it was not consensual. So she was like, I, you know, he raped me. I didn't want to have sex with him, yada, yada. The book kind of goes into details about like what happened during the like alleged raping. Kobe says, obviously in court that it was all consensual. She wanted to have it, you know, wanted to have sex, all that fun stuff, fun stuff. I shouldn't say that, but you know what I'm saying? And then on the flip side, she was saying that she did not want to. She kept saying no. He was forcing himself on her not a good situation not a good situation at all and i do remember when it, when all these like allegations came out like i used to wear like kobe jerseys to like basically every day my mom would let me <laughs> i would wear them to school and then after that happened it was like i'm throwing them all away like my parents were like you're not wearing that out of the house like heck no and so yeah and so anyways it it was a really obviously tough time for for Kobe, really tough time for Kobe's family because he obviously had a wife. I believe he already had a kid or two at that point as well. And going through all the trials, everyone, I mean you can only imagine if you ever if you watch basketball back in the day, the signs people were holding, the words they were yelling at him just like, "Oh my gosh, like it's it's basically Deshaun Watson 
right now. The quarterback for the Browns, how he's going through similar allegations with massage therapists. Um, now his was with like something like 60 massage therapists. So I guess a little different. That might be a little worse, but still equally as bad. People harassing him, people harassing his family, his teammates, everything. And so the book kind of goes into to the rape trial, like the public humility that those allegations had on him. I never really thought about it because I was, I'm not going to say like, obviously I was just, I was a kid. So I didn't really even know what rape was, if I'm being honest, uh, at the time, I think I was in like second grade or something. And so I kind of didn't even really understand what, like the severity of what was going on in, in this situation. But you can only imagine how miserable it would have been to be him and anyone around him and the girl. Now, they ended up uh, settling the case, so it didn't end up going to like a full court trial. So they, it, he proved, proved, I'm doing air quotes for the people that are listening. He proved his innocence um, or at least was not found guilty of of them he obviously i'm sure the lady has like an nda now i'm sure she can't talk about it um and and the girl was also super young i think she was if i remember correctly like 18 or 19 he obviously was like 20 or 21 but still like all crazy bad you know, crazy bad situation and i think it also came out that uh the alleged victim was also like uh had like uh what's it called uh was like schizophrenic so it was not a good situation it probably wasn't it, i don't even know but anywho what i thought was kind of cool and inspiring from that chapter when it relates to kobe is well i'll say two things that were interesting one i don't know if this one's interesting or just shows you how much of like a psychopath he was for basketball he was talking about how his family was falling apart. He was talking about how all of his brand deals were falling apart. His bank account was running dry. Like pretty much everything around him. He didn't know if he was going to be in prison for the rest of his life. And there was a quote that he gave during the book that just shows you how much like he dedicated his life to basketball. He, his quote was something along the lines of, you know, they can take away my family, they can take away my freedom, they can take away my money, but they can't take away the sport of basketball. And so he didn't didn't really like it was just like, hey, look, I'm I'm not gonna let them ruin like have this ruin my career. Cause you can only imagine I mean, like, you know, if if you have a, if you're running a company or if you're, you know, working at a job right now or if you're whatever it is in school, just imagine if you know, whether you did or not, if you got accused of raping somebody. And now not only are you accused of it and now all like your friends and family and your little community knows about it now also, you know, expand that out to think of the entire world. I mean, Kobe is like the most popular player in like, uh, in China. And so like literally the entire world is looking at Kobe and judging him crazy hard. It's like, it, I cannot imagine the stress and anxiety that Kobe was going through, whether he deserved it or not, probably did, but regardless like massive massive magnifying glass on him and in it was obviously affecting the way he was playing he was you know not playing well and he's like dude screw this they can take away everything from me but they can't take away how hard i try on the basketball court and so he said that like before the games he'd be so stressed out dealing with lawyers dealing with his family dealing with the whole case but he said as soon as he laced up the the sneakers and went onto that court he was like the next four quarters, I'm not thinking about anything other than basketball and trying to play the best freaking basketball I possibly can. So I think one, this is like it is cool to see how like how dedicated he was to the game and how well he was able to kind of like drown out the noise, at least for you know the short term, which I think it, everybody can relate to. And and there's just a bunch of situations where like I need to do a better job of like I need to you know just dial in, focus up, and and get after whatever tasks in front of me. Now hopefully. I'm not distracted because of any crazy allegations. That's a totally different story. But I thought that was cool. The other part that I, I liked kind of taking it to a more of a positive note is, you know, he also was talking about like, look, like, or I should say he told himself that he's known for his work ethic. Even at that young age of being, you know, a young 20 year old kid, he was known for being like the hardest worker on any team he was on. 
He, nobody would be in the gym longer than him. He would be showing up to practice or showing up to the facility at three, four in the morning and, and starting his workout routine and going to bed early, eating all the right food, even from like, like as a child. And so he's like, look, if I'm known for having this hard of a work ethic, like on the court, you better believe I need to be just as dedicated in my personal life to my wife and to my kids. So I thought that was cool too. And I think also something that we can relate to, like uh, I know people that are, you know, super dedicated to becoming the best freaking whatever, best at playing video games, best at their job, best at, uh, you know, I want to train for this marathon. It's like, they're spending all this time and energy and resources, money to go and be the best at whatever random hobby or career, or whatever it is. And I think a lot of people need to kind of take a step back. I remember like, yo, there's like, people that are around you that like love you want to spend time with you want to like they're there to support you and just remember to bring that same work ethic like, back to them and show you how hard you're working for them so anywho that is kind of like my my big takeaway from the book it was a very interesting kind of some parts were a little tough to read but uh was an interesting was an interesting chapter now as far as like would i recommend the book i would say if you are a kobe fan or if you think that you are, you know, a grinder, you get after, you got a really good work ethic, I think I would highly, I would highly recommend you read the book. For Kobe fans, obviously a lot of cool untold stories that you can that you can read about, hear about, hear his takes on things. A lot of cool quotes in the books or in the book that I never had known or had had really ever read about or heard about. So I thought that part was cool. Also, it does go into his career post basketball, which I really like because I mean, dude, he he left the NBA and instantly won what was I think an Emmy, um, like right off the bat, which is like you know it's like winning an NBA championship, but for he made a short film and instantly like very first short film he ever put out, he put it out um, for his retirement. Like he was like, hey, I'm retiring. Here's a little like he wrote a poem and then like produced an entire uh, like short film about it and won. I believe it was an Emmy. Let me just let me just double check that because I should I should probably know that before I'm putting it out there. Kobe um, Bryant Emmy. Let's see. Was it an Emmy? Was it an Emmy? Yes, he won an Emmy Emmy for uh, his his short film called Deer Basketball. So anywho, basically goes in a bunch of cool stories about Kobe was where all I was going with that. The other thing is if you're trying to like if you're in you know one of these career like if you're running your own business, if you're in sales, if you're you know getting into real estate, just anything where you're trying to be the best version of you, you're trying to get after, you're trying to just maximize um, all of your time and all of your ability and all your efforts into something and you think no one works as hard as me. Like I hear Gary Vee say that crap all the time. Yeah, I work harder than anybody. You can't work as hard as me. You can't work harder. It's like I recommend anybody that thinks they're working the hardest on, on planet Earth to read this book and this – it is a different level of dedication that Kobe was putting into basketball and then was putting into uh, his career as, as a, as a filmmaker and in business once he left the league. But the man is, is a workaholic. So I also recommend it to anybody that is just trying to improve themselves, improve their work ethic. I think the book would be really great for you as well. So anywho, that has been my review. Let me get it up for the camera one more time if you're, if you're watching this. That is my review of Kobe, Life Lessons from a Legend. Um, once again, all in all, solid book. I appreciate everybody that has been tuning in. I know this is probably one of my, you know, it's, it's shorter. It's whatever. It'll probably end up being like a 30-minute episode. But really appreciate everybody tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Chris's Secret Podcast. And remember, uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, rate, review, all that fun stuff. We are on YouTube. We are on Spotify. We are on Apple. If you're just going to be checking out the podcast episodes, if you want to see clips from the show, if you're like, look, Chris, I, I love you, but I don't have you know 30 minutes to an hour of my life once a week to dedicate to you. I get it. I respect it. Check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and also once again on YouTube. I push put short clips out for for you know you all to digest in under sixty seconds or less, so you can see kind of highlights from episodes that I've put out in the past. So really appreciate it if you go check those out. Also, if you're on YouTube, you can hit that notification bell so that anytime I post new content like this, you'll be able to get 
notified that you know, I have a new video that dropped or a new short that went out. And then if you want to find me, once again, all my handles. So the podcast is called Chris's Secret Podcast. That's where you can find me on YouTube. You can find me on what is it, Spotify. You can find me on Apple. You can also find me TikTok, Instagram. Or if you want to find me personally, my personal uh, Instagram handle is at Chris Arslan. You can also just follow me there and slide in my DMs. I have a handful of people that actually have found me and just like hit me up through my personal DM. So I appreciate y'all as well. And make sure if you have questions for me, put them in the mailbag. And remember, go out there and find some ways to make some passive income, whether it be through real estate, side hustles, stocks, bonds, I don't care what. Um, go figure out some ways to make some passive income so I can find you out on the slopes, hitting the slopes with me, hitting the pickleball courts. You know the drill. Anyways, peace, y'all. Have a good one. Thank <laughs> you.